Well, praise the Lord. We're back again. My name is Jim Caseman, the president and founder of the Association of Faith Churches and Ministries. And I'm honored to bring the word to you today, the word of God. And of course, we're talking about getting to know God. But I want to take this opportunity as well to thank all of our partners and friends who support this ministry with their prayers and finances so that we are able to take the gospel to the whole world. All right, back to the subject of getting to know God. We left off in our last session. Uh, we started talking about the importance of words and how God had created everything with the spoken word, as we saw in Genesis chapter 1, and God said, and God said, and God said. That's how he created everything that exists with words. Now those words came out of his heart, of course. And uh, so it would be good for us then to continue on that subject for a little bit and explain it a little more, more thoroughly. And here some, there are laws in the spiritual realm and just like there is in the physical dimension. We have the law of gravity, for example. And uh, any time, I mean, you have to be careful uh, uh, if, that you come into contact with the law of gravity the right way or you're going to get hurt. Now, you know better than to be careless at the, at the top of a stairway because you could end up falling. And, and in, in some cases, people even have gotten killed by the time they landed at the bottom of the stairway. You wouldn't be stupid enough to parachute out of, a, out of an airplane without flying at 10,000 feet without a parachute because you'll fall and you'll make a big splash on Main Street. You'll be dead. So gravity is a law. And it depends on how you come into contact with that law. If you come into contact with that law the wrong way, you're dead. If you come into contact with the law the right way, you'll live. And so there are many physical laws that govern this physical universe that we live in. But then there's also being that we are spirits and that God clothes us with a physical body while we're in this physical dimension because without our physical bodies, we wouldn't be able to navigate in this physical dimension. I mean, if I tried to drive my car, my hands would go right through the steering wheel if I didn't have a physical body. So I, without a physical body, I couldn't be teaching you today. If I, if I uh, came without my body and I'm um, preaching and teaching, uh, you wouldn't hear me, you wouldn't see me because you live in physical bodies. So I have to be in a physical body so we can produce physical sound waves that you can pick up with your physical body and then hear it spiritually. And so that's how it works. Now, we can see this principle and, and, and outlined very clearly in, in, in uh, Romans chapter 10, and I'll just pick it up in verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. Now, the heart is the innermost being of the human spirit. Right in here, in the natural realm, we'd call it the guts in here, the bowel. That's the center of the human spirit. And so, in your mouth, the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. Didn't say head, heart. Now, when it says heart, uh, again, that's not talking about your physical heart pumping blood. It's talking about your heart or the innermost being of the human spirit. And it says, that, that is the word of faith, which we preach. But, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All right, so here's how it works. We can see it plainly here. That the words that you speak in your heart will come to pass if you believe it in your heart. Now, if it's just something mentally up here, you can say it all day long and nothing's going to happen. You have to believe what you're saying in your innermost being, in your heart. Then it will come to pass. Good or bad. If you really believe that it's God's will for you to live in poverty... That's what you'll have. If you really believe that God entered into covenant with us through Jesus Christ so we could have our needs met abundantly, then you'll have it, if you really believe it. So you have to make a choice. 
and uh, with your free will again. And so then, that's where words come into play. Now, as long as I'm in Romans here, I'm really close to Hebrews, and I'll come right here to Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1. Therefore, holy brethren, now that's everybody that's truly born again and a, and a Christian, we were created. It says in Ephesians 4, 24, that God created us in true holiness and righteousness. So it'd be just like Adam before he sinned. All right. But now in verse 1, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. So, a couple of thoughts here about confession. First of all, because of religion. I think it was not any... I mean, it, I used to believe, and I don't think I'm any exception because of the denomination I was raised in, that people, when, they, when you said... That, conf that he's the apostle and high priest of our confession, the thing that was on their mind foremost was the confession of sins. Well, there is a place, all right. We need to repent and confess our sins if we do sin so that God can forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But that's not something you do 24 hours a day. At least you shouldn't be. You should get smart somewhere along the way and know that sin's going to hurt you. And uh, anyway... That, that's good. But confession, Christianity is known as the great confession. It is known as the great confession or it is known as confessing or saying the same thing that God says about us. And that's where the Bible is so important and that we need to read it every day. Because the Bible tells us exactly what we're to confess and what we're not to confess. Now, in general terms now, we're not to confess lies. That's of the devil. We're not, but we're to confess truth, which is God. So forget about lies, that's death. We want truth, that's life. So in our getting to know God then, we need to read the Bible, and then we'll begin to find out that what his will is. Colossians 1 verse 9 says that it is God's will and his, and his will is his words. That's one or two of the same things. It's God's will that we be filled with the knowledge of his will, which is his word, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So he wants us to be filled with his will. What is his will? What is his will regarding words? What should I speak? We want to know what his will is. So then in the next verse it says, so that we may have a walk worthy of him, fully please him, be fruitful in every good work, and increase our knowledge of God. He wants us to succeed. He wants us to prosper. But we need to speak in line with his word, which is his will. And then Jesus can bring that confession to pass. God then can move on our behalf, and he works through Jesus. And again, we'll talk about that later. Jesus is a heart priest. He's our mediator. He brings us close to God, and he sees to it that as long as we speak, speak in line with the new blood covenant, God Almighty can cause it to come to pass through his word and by his spirit. And so we need to be sure that we're talking daily God talk. I guess that's a good way to put it. That's better than talking devil talk, which is what? Devil talk would be, uh, well, I tell you, I'll just go straight to the scriptures because I told you the Bible will tell us exactly what is right and what is wrong. As we come over here to Galatians chapter 5, we see a list of, of the uh, uh, lusts or desires of the flesh. And that is, of course, not godly desires. Because death is in our flesh. But when you're born again, when you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, you're a new creation. And now uh, you are created in true righteousness and holiness. And so you're, you created holy and sinless. And so there, you, from your heart then, if you're born again, you would, you would just, it should become part of you if you renew your mind and everything that you need to you bring your flesh into control and say, hey, we're not going to talk like the devil anymore. No, we're going to talk like God. We have to bring our flesh into subjection to the word of God. Like it said in verse 16 of Galatians 5, I say then, walk in the Spirit. Well, that's the Spirit of holiness. That's the Holy Spirit. 
and then you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh wants to talk doubt, unbelief, and evil. And so some of the works of the flesh are evident. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorceries, hatreds, words of hatreds, words that have to do with idolatry or sorcery, words of contentions or jealousies or outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, words having to do with envy and murder and drunkenness and the rivalries. This is all evil. Now, I used to do that all the time before I, was a, before I asked Jesus to come into my heart at age 29. That's exactly what I would do. But now that I've received Jesus as my Lord and Savior in 1972, I don't do this anymore. I don't let my flesh do this anymore. I don't let my flesh talk along these lines anymore. We talk about holiness. We talk about righteousness. We talk about the right things to do. We talk about God's words. So that's just a matter of taking our free will and getting our minds renewed and changing the way we talk and the way we believe and the way we, the way we walk with God. Praise the Lord. So we've got these two. Heaven, hell. The devil, God. Truth, lies. Death, life. Sickness, health. Poverty, abundance. And on and on. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, uh, we then are talking about words and the importance of speaking the right words. I, I, I want to just real quickly, I want to come back here to Proverbs 18 because I made reference to it a few times, but I didn't read it. And here it is, Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. So what will we speak? Now, we have, if you'll go to the AFCM website, AFCM, spell out the word, international.org, you'll find resources there that we can make available to you. And one of them is called, I call it the faith aid. In other words, it helps us walk in faith, the faith aid. And there is numerous, script, numerous scriptures listed in there that you can start to confess and so you can get used to speaking the way God wants you to speak. So we give all kinds of scriptures to have to do with healing and, and deliverance and everything else. And, and, and then we paraphrase it. Now it's one thing to hear somebody preach the word, like I'm teaching you through these YouTube sessions. But it's entirely a whole different thing when you say it yourself. And you hear what you're saying. Remember now... In Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as you, could, as you begin to speak God's word and you hear it and you do it, faith in God will come. And without faith, you can't please God because there's only one way to walk with God and that's by faith. And God's a spirit, John 4, 24. God is spirit and those that worship him is worship in spirit and truth. So if you're going to worship God and walk with God and talk like God, it's all by faith. Because you can't see God. He's a spirit. And you can't see into the spiritual realm. It's not very often that God will come upon someone because more than likely it's something to do with ministry, but that he'll open your eyes and let you see what's going on in the spiritual dimension. 99.9% .9 of the time it's all by faith. And um, so that's the way it is. If you're going to walk with God, it's by faith. So as we learn to speak, Speak in line with God's word, and we hear it, and we do it, faith in God will grow. And we'll become more and more, we'll talk more and more like him, we'll believe more and more like him, and, we'll want to be, and we will want to be more and more like him. And we won't get enough of him, because he is so awesome, so awesome. All right, so coming back then to Genesis chapter 1, that's where we started. Genesis is, everything in Genesis is also referred to as seed. In other words, a lot of truths in God's word all are, start off as a, in seed form in Genesis. Now, Adam and Eve then were separated from God. Now, um, it would be important here to make a, a mention of this. This is another important principle that you'll probably want to write down and never forget because this is how things work in the spiritual realm. 
God is just. He's a God of justice. And he even has to treat the devil justly. <laughs> he can't cheat or cut corners. He's got to do things exactly, everything right legally with the devil in order to redeem mankind. Now, Satan hijacked the human race right here in Genesis 3. Adam was originally created to have dominion over all the world. There was no devil. There was no sin. There was no death. And our bodies were originally created to live for eternity. But the uh, devil came in, as we already discussed, and he, he then, what did he do? He worked with the five physical senses. Now, our bodies have five physical senses. What we could see, what we can hear, what we can smell, what we can taste, what we can touch. Now, I guess I'll have to take another side trip here first before I get to the other one that I was going to get to. But right now I'm going to go right back here to, to Luke and right back here in chapter 16. And here's a familiar account. It's the Lazarus and the beggar. And of course, uh, the Lazarus was, uh, uh, he was in poverty. He was just eating of the crumbs of the table of the rich man. And of course, then it happened then that the beggar died in Genesis chapter 16, verse 22, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Wow, that's what we all want. The rich, and it's our choice too, we can have it. And the rich man also died and was buried, okay? The beggar knows God, the rich man doesn't. The beggar goes to heaven, the rich man goes to hell. And in verse 23, and being in torments in hell, he lift up his eyes. Now, wait a minute now. Their bodies are buried in the physical grave, both of them. Now, if you've been around for any time at all, you know that bodies begin to decay immediately. And they'll begin to really stink like Lazarus. When they, Jesus had them open his tomb on the fourth day, uh, they said, he stinketh. Bodies rot and they stink when they're dead. And uh, so those five physical senses have been buried in the grave. But now they are in another dimension. They're in the spiritual dimension. But notice the human spirit is just clothed with flesh and the human spirit has five spiritual senses because he lift up his eyes well where there's eyes there's a head and he saw Abraham afar off he even recognized Abraham and and Lazarus in his bosom he recognized Lazarus so uh, we look like our physical bodies really if you could step outside of your physical body you'd see a great resemblance because without their physical bodies they recognized each other and he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And said, Lastly, he made tip the tip of his finger in water and clue my tongue. So there's, there's physical sense. There's a mouth. He's talking. And of course, there's eyes. There's got to be a head. So you can see there's five spiritual senses. Well, coming back here then to Genesis again, and in chapter 3, the devil is appealing to the physical senses of Eve. And finally gets her to look at the fruit. It looks good, probably smells good. It tasted good when she tasted it. And she presented it to her husband, Adam. Now, Satan took, captured the human race through the five physical senses. Now, in order for God to redeem mankind, he's going to have to come into this world literally as a human spirit in every way in the flesh in order to redeem mankind. That's the only way he can do it legally. Now that's where we'll pick up on it on our next time together. And meanwhile again, for those of you, I keep repeating this because there's always new people tuning in, I encourage you to watch this teaching in its entirety. All of the videos will be posted on the AFCM International YouTube channel. You can also receive resource items through our website at AFCM, spell out the word international, dot org. And you can get a download and download the app and find the, the faith aid, which I talked about with all the scriptures. And then, of course, order books, teaching materials, and associate in the ministry. And again, I want to thank you for listening 
And please join me again. I was going to say tomorrow, but for sure the next time <laughs> that you're able to tune in to the YouTube channel. Meanwhile, may God bless you richly. Amen.